Hi guys, um, welcome to another tutorial. It has been a little while, um, but today I'm going to be showing you how to build this contraption right here. This is weird to control, but anyway, I'm going to show you how to build this contraption here. What this is, is it's an automatic um, sieving machine. So this is for agrarian skies, crash landing possibly, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, all those mods that use um, sieving to get ores. So this one here does gravel, it does sand, and it does um, dust. And it also can be used from sort of like, depending how fast you can get it, sort of mid to late game. Um, yeah, so once you've built this, this should be all your requirements for ores anyway. Um, but later in the game, you go to agricraft and do your, your metal crops and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, let's get started. It is a, it is a design that I, um, that I came up with. I'm not sure if there's something similar on the net yet. But I've just been messing around. Let me just jump back into a screen. Just been messing around with a few different designs and stuff. But this one seems to be the most compact. Um, the great thing about it is it can be used late game as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's get started building it. So what we're going to start off with is um, six pulverizers. So I haven't, I can't cheat in the uh, resonant one. So we're just going to have to stick with basic for now. But anyway, so six time set day six pulverizers so we want it in this pattern here one two three so this is going to keep it um, all nice and small what we're going to do which i probably should have done off camera is set all the pulverizers up like this so blue is your input if you haven't used thermal expansion which you probably have because most mod packs have it now but blue is input red is uh orange is output and yellow is secondary output. So if you set, uh, if you pulverize cobble, um, you'll have a chance, I'm not sure what the chance is, but you'll have a chance to create sand as a secondary output. So we're gonna use that to go at the top. Um, because of how this is timed, we won't actually need to use those. So this one here, I was trying to not waste any resources and push it back into the machinery, but it actually doesn't really have time to do that anyway because these all work at the same speed, assuming they're all upgraded the same, they all work at exactly the same speed. So these, oh, I must have already preset this one up. Awesome. So these should all be the same. Yeah, cool. Primo. So what we're gonna do next is we wanna put the sieving machines, or the, the automatic sieves, on the side here. Boom, boom, boom. So this one here, it's got three, so it's gonna go cobble, gravel, sand, dust. So it's sieving dust. This one's gonna be cobble, sand, oh, sorry, cobble, gravel, sand. This one will be sieving sand. This one's just cobble, gravel, so it'll be sieving gravel. So that way, uh, that means you get all the resources from all the ore types. I mean, there are nether ores. You could probably set something up for that as well quite easily, which would only require that back one, I think it is, like crushed nether rack, yeah. So it would only require that back one, but we're not doing that. We're just doing the main ones just to get you through to the late game. So from here, um, because this has an output of sand, we're not actually going to use the sand um, in like these machines over here, because like I said, this will keep up with this one, which means this will pulverize just as fast as this one, which means there's no, there's no chance for this to even be used. I mean, you can if you really want to be frugal about it and you could chop this machine size down even more, but it'll be super slow. And I wanted something that I could use late game and not have to worry about. So yeah. Anyway, um, what do we need? We need some item conduits. So this is going to pick up all our sand, this this barrel here. The cool thing about this, well, what I do on my um, server, I don't really don't really record it, but what I play on my server, I um, basically put an ME interface on top where that barrel there is. I put an ME interface there, and I use all that sand for like auto crafting stuff like that, which seems to be pretty good. Uh, what? Okay, cool. So this one is going to be collecting all our sand. Um, you don't really have to do this, but I, I just like to uh, to lock it in. So basically you put your whatever your item in there, you shift right click the bottom right hand corner of the, um, of the barrel, and that will lock it to that item type. Cool. Cool. So that's going to be collecting all the secondary inputs from the sand. Um, I'm trying to explain as much as I can without making this video take too long. <laughs> okay, so this one here, this is going to be pulverizing gravel, which the secondary output will be dust. Dust I don't want to use, again, like I said before, we're not going to use the secondary out uh, inputs, outputs, whatever. 
Cool, so we're just going to turn those off so nothing else is connected, and this one here will be dust. Bang, lock that one as well. And then the third one, which is on the this one here, which is also going to be um, sieving, uh, <laughs> pulverizing gravel. Um, this one's also going to be dust. Oh man, I should have grabbed more. I was thinking about it, but I didn't do it. Cool. Lock that. So there's all the three. So you might wonder why I've got these upgrades. This is because we don't want any overflow whatsoever. So this will be a fully self-sufficient, assuming you can supply the power to it, which will be easy enough, but fully self-sufficient. So we're going to put MK1 upgrades, structural ones, structural twos, and then we're going to put void upgrades as well. What that allows is that the void upgrade will, once these barrels are full, the it will void everything else that goes into it. So you won't need 64 by 64 stacks of sand. I mean, you might for glass, but even that's a lot. But like I said, with that, just chuck an ME interface, chuck it into the ME system and use it for auto crafting. Um, okay, so from here, we're just going to have an output. So three transfer nodes. This will, once it serves, um, serves anything here, the output goes here and these transfer nodes will suck up the output, anything in there. So with that, I'm just going to put a chest, a compact chest on here. Um, I'll let you guys figure out how to process it. I can do a video on how, how I process it if you really want to see it, but um, it's pretty stock standard. So I just want to get under here and lay some piping down. Now with this piping, I'm using redstone um, conduits. You, will, you won't, for this build, you won't ever need more than this redstone conduit. This transfers 8,000 RF per tick, right? So currently as this machine stands, it's all fully basic, so it's nothing's been upgraded. Each of these pulverizers use, um, this is a bit of mess for you, 40 RF per tick, and there's six pulverizers. So 40, RF per t 40 times six is 240 RF to run just the pulverizers. So you could run that off uh, one slightly upgraded magmatic dynamo or something like that. Um, and then these six sieves, these are sieves, they only use six RF per tick, so only three of them, 18. So in total, um, you're only looking at like, what, 258, somewhere around there, 258 RF to run this whole system. Once you upgrade these fully, and this is the reason why I'm using um, redstone energy flux ducts, is because these pulverizers will take 800 RF per tick, once they're resonant ones and they've got three augmentations on them, they'll use 800 each one, um, so 800, uh, where are we? 800 times 6, um, you're looking at 4,800 or 4,800 RF per tick just to run the pulverizers. And these, once they've got 60 speed upgrades and 60 fortune upgrades, we use 401 RF per tick each. So that's 1,203 RF per tick just to get the servers all running full speed, full fortune. Um, and then once you've got the whole system done, it's going to cost you uh, 6,003 RF per tick to run the whole system but in saying that when you get to that stage you will not be worrying about resources whatsoever um yeah cool cool let's move on so let me just fill in this really quickly so now obviously we need to feed these machines this one i should have probably turned around actually that's what i keep forgetting uh, da -da -da, which pulverizer was this one no it was the other one Okay, so on this one, you want the input from the left, which is the same, but you want the output, the main output, to go to the back instead. So this one here is the back slot. We can turn off that. We don't actually need that side slot. Cool. And that's just for this, um, oh gosh, where did that just go? Okie doke. Anyway, that's just to accept the, from the cobblestone generator. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So if I get what I need, I need lava water transfer node and some pipes so as the system as it stands this will be able to keep up with just one world interact uh, world interaction upgrade you can later on speed these up with speed upgrades stack for, um, upgrades and more world interaction upgrades if you want that will be to keep up with the late game like once you get these all fully maxed out so there we go so now that's filling up this this is going to be backing out to here this is going to go to here this is going to go to here and they're all going to go up here yeah, there you have it. So 
it's three the build is three by four um, if you've got any ideas on how we could make this smaller or how I could make it better please let me know because I love uh, I'm just liking I'm just trying out different sort of styles and like different um, you know like just trying to make it as fast as possible but as compact as possible uh, because you don't want to build platforms this size just for like your sieving machines you know you just want to have a really small compact system but anyway um, I'll leave it I'll leave you with that and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day see you later bye